I just want to, um, I'm, I'm testing out things on myself all the time. I'm trying to really see what's the best thing for me to eat, like I say, myself and my family. How you doing? Welcome to another video. Um, today's video, I'm going to talk about a little bit my, about my diet, uh, what I do for nutrition and what I've learned about nutrition since I stopped drinking alcohol. I was going to call this, am I a vegan? Because that was the question that I was asked. But I decided not to because, um, yeah, there's, there's so many different things and I think it can open up um, a lot of senseless debate uh, about this topic. Um, and to be honest with you, all I'm interested in is trying to be healthy. And I think your diet and taking notice of your diet is the next thing that you should be concentrating on. Um, because I really think that you can make big changes in your life. Once you've stopped drinking alcohol, get alcohol out of your life, then you can make some massive changes in your life because of your changing your diet, right? Because you're changing, uh, not only eliminating certain things, but starting to eat certain things. Um, so I want to talk about a little bit about that, a little bit about my journey from there. Uh, you know, and I'm coming at this from the perspective of I knew nothing, uh, just as I did about alcohol. I just did it. Uh, my diet was something that I just did without any thought, without any planning, um, because this is the way that I grew up. This is the way my parents were, were eating. This is the way my, my friends were eating, the people around me. This was our cultural way of eating. Um, and I think apart from the alcohol, this is something that has caused me a lot of problems over the years. And I think it's the same for um, other people. So let's walk anyway. Like I said, um, with a lot of these videos a lot of these videos on topics like these a lot of people can be triggered by these things right um you know this is only my opinion um it's my point of view i'm only trying to express my point of view it's nothing more than that um, everyone's different i think everyone's got different bodies different lives different um outlooks different morals um and one thing that I'm, I'm sure about is that dogma is not good for you. You know, sticking to one thing because you just think, well, that's the way it should be. Uh, or because these are my morals and I'm going to stick to this regardless. Uh, because morals are individualistic. Um, so I'm not approaching this from the perspective of a recommendation to anyone. Uh, I'm only coming at it from my experience and my only recommendation uh, as always is going to be do the research yourself look into this yourself and decide which is the best diet for you you know my personal experience was I, I, I was never fully vegan anyway I was always plant-based what they call plant-based so um, most of my diet came from eating plants uh, from the time that I stopped drinking alcohol so let me go back a bit further and I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about it from that perspective. My dad went into hospital uh, six months after I stopped, so June of 2013. He goes into hospital and we didn't think he was going to come out. The doctors were saying that a lot of uh, the things that were... His, his condition was caused by his lifestyle. So basically the stuff that he was putting into his mouth. So he'd smoked, he drank, not as much of a drinker as a smoker, but he'd smoked for most of his life. He'd stopped, I suppose, maybe after he'd had his first heart attack when he was in his 50s, he stopped smoking then, but he continued to eat a fairly poor diet. Um, and so that, he came out of hospital, he, he wasn't, uh, he didn't stay, he didn't, he didn't die in hospital, he lasted another, I think it was four years maybe, I'm not sure now, but um, it spurred me on to read a lot of stuff. So I started reading. And one of the first books that I picked up and one of the first books that really made sense to me was uh, a fellow called um, T. Colin Campbell. And it was a book called Whole, H or W-H-O-L-E. Uh, and he was coming from the perspective of, you know, we should be only eating plant-based stuff. And, but he was talking about things from a whole basis. Eat food that nature has provided for us. And then he started going into things, well, this is why vegetables are good for you, this is why um, nuts and seeds are good for you, this is why uh, fruit is good for you, you should be eating the, the whole fruit instead of the, uh, instead of you know extracting vitamin C and eating that kind of stuff. And it made a whole load of sense. You know, I'm not being, 
uh, you know, I'm being honest when I say that to you. It's like uh, some of the studies he was coming up against eating, uh, especially dairy products, uh, made sense to me at the time. But like I said, I, I, I'm a novice at this. I didn't realize, I didn't understand how to read. Um, I didn't know what a, an, an epistemological study was, which is when you're looking at nutrition is almost useless, right? Um, I understand that now, but I didn't understand it then. Anyway, one book led to another book and I started reading more and more into the vegan diet. I never liked calling myself a vegan because like I said, it's full of dogma. You know, some people have a religion surrounding veganism and that never sat right with me. So I was always, it was always something that I didn't like about that. Um, but plant-based was good. Uh, every so often I would eat uh, an egg or I would eat uh, something, you know, like the, the cheese maybe, but I never ate. Uh, it was eight years that I didn't eat any, any flesh, any uh, animal, meats any eggs any uh, oh no i probably ate a couple of eggs in in omelets and stuff like that but nothing more than that um and that was just a fact of it so my whole the, the way i learn is through experience one like everyone else learns but i read a lot um and i tend to mix that uh, that you know try to read and then apply the things that i'm reading into my life you know to try and put those things into practice and think you know what is scientific fact? Can I, can I get some science here? And can, can I get some science that's going to inform my decisions and my choices and you know, the things that I put into my mouth? Because I don't want to end up like my dad, right? I don't want to end up in hospital like that. Um, I have a tendency to listen to my body, especially since I stopped drinking alcohol because I think my body has become a lot more sensitive to these things since I stopped. Um, but because I make correlations through that and then corrections based upon those correlations. Well, this is the way I feel today and it must be because I ate this thing yesterday, so on and so forth. That's the correlations that I make. And um, I think sometimes uh, there could be a lot of different causes to, to the way I'm feeling. You know, there could be a change of my diet, could be a change of um the uh, for instance now we're, up, we're uh, almost five five thousand feet high and that's going to affect me to a certain degree um maybe i've been doing a lot of work lately a lot of thinking maybe i've been just stressed out lately or you know there's a lot of different things that can affect the way that you feel right outside of food but i've put a lot of my um a lot of my decisions into that bucket let's say so the way i think now is I still tend to eat a lot of stuff that is plant-based. So I still base a lot of things that I'm doing around plant-based, right? Um, but um, I'm more along the lines of, well, I want to eat whole foods or whole, uh, what comes whole from nature. And if you're doing it from that perspective, you cannot take out animal products, right? How, however much you might want to, however much you're, um, your morals point you in that direction of not eating animals, not eating flesh, not eating milk, not eating eggs, not eating honey, any of those things. Um, they are part of the whole foods experience. Um, and I don't think, from my own personal self, I don't think I was getting anywhere near... I'm going to sit down here for a minute because it's such a lovely spot. Um, I don't think I was getting anywhere near the nutrition that I needed on the... Uh, on a purely vegan diet, right, let's put it like that. I mean, vegan diet can be anything. A vegan diet can be a lot of processed junk foods. And the, the so when I started out with veganism, especially in Spain, you just, uh, the, the amount of things that you could buy that were vegan were just, there wasn't many. Um, and now it's just, there you're proliferated with processed junk. And it is as much junk when you go out and you buy a, um, I can't believe it's not a burger burger or I can't believe it's not a meat burger, that kind of thing. That is shit. And I don't care who, it's industrial waste and you shouldn't be putting that in, inside your body. So, you know, when you're, when you're going from the principles of a plant-based diet, right, or a whole foods diet, you're talking about looking at things from the perspective of eating whole foods, 
you know, things that come directly from nature that haven't been altered. You know, so you can cook these things, um, but they haven't been altered. Your grandmother would recognize them. You know, put one of these burgers in front of your grandmother and she would say, well, it, it looks like meat, it tastes like meat, so it is meat. And you say to her, it's not meat, it's, it was made in a factory. I don't think she's going to eat it, you know. Um, and you shouldn't either, you know. I don't think, I think these things are just junk, like I said. When you look at um, indigenous tribes, I mean, I've, I, I'm a, an avid reader, so I read a lot and I read, read widely. And when you look at indigenous tribes like the, the Maasai Mara, for instance, who their diet is uh, a lot of milk, a lot of, uh, they, they have cattle and they bleed these cattle and eat their, they drink their blood. Um, and they're healthy people. You know, when you look at indigenous people, they generally tend to be healthy and they're eating off the land and they're eating everything, you know. They're eating everything, you know, what, what we consider to be, you know, we, I read in one book that they eat the fat, the fattest parts, it's like a, an animal, you know, a lion when it breaks into a, um, when it takes down a, a deer or something like that, it will open the deer and then it will eat the, the internal organs first because they're the tastiest for it, or it will go for the fattiest parts. Um, that when these indigenous tribes eat uh, animals that they go for the fattiest selections of the meat and they will give the, the, the lean stuff, the muscles, to the dog because it's not, I mean, it, it seems to be twisted on what we're doing. So, you know, and I'm reading more and more and more into that side of things. So I'm getting a balance now. I don't know if I'm heading in the right direction, but I definitely feel where I was, I tell you, um, I watched this guy called John Venus for a long time and John Venus was a vegan bodybuilder um, and he'd gone vegan because of again moral issues himself and his wife had a baby and he really started to look into it again from the perspective of he, he didn't want to um, he didn't want to feed his child he didn't want to give uh, he didn't want to um, to take away from his child nutrition that his, ch his child should be getting right he didn't want to deprive his child of good nutrition and he decided to go back on uh, eating meat from um, what he considered to be a moral perspective so it would be meat that only he hunted I think that's where he was coming from but anyway he lost he had a huge community on uh, YouTube and obviously overnight if you're a vegan and you go Meat eater, you're going to lose a lot of that community, and he got a lot, of, uh, a lot of abuse because of it. But it was one thing that he said, and you know, at the time it was like, well, yeah, pff, you know, you're you're sort of uh, you've killed your crowd, and you know, I'm, I don't have respect for you. But then I, I went back to him when I was starting to have problems with my own diet and starting to question uh, my own plant-based diet, and. Um, it was just one video that I was watching of him and he was talking about having a uh, a problem with one of his discs, pain in one of his discs, his back discs, that just wouldn't go away. And within two weeks of being on the vegan diet, this, this problem went. So um, I've been eating meat now for a month and I had the same, a similar problem. I had a uh, degenerative disc, this is what it was, diagnosed by the doctors um, and nothing was I got several sets of injections and that didn't work um, and then I changed to to eat and meat again and within yeah two weeks three weeks of eating meat again the pain hasn't gone away completely but I tell you it's 90% better it's still there it's still stiff but you know I'm not expecting miracles but it's uh, you know it's something to do with the I wasn't getting certain nutrients on that diet uh, you know, and people could say, well, you were doing the diet wrong and you weren't eating this and you weren't eating that. And, you know, I'm I'm quite a acceptable of that. But, you know, if you're not in my position, you can't say that. You know, if you don't know what I've been eating, then you can't say that. You know, um, people, like I said, are, are not the same. And one of the things that I think of is that dogma is, uh, in anything in life, is a losing strategy because it closes your mind it makes you into a, um, a robot. It gives you, it closes your mind to anything you, you know, you will have this, um, this idea that you've hit on the, the right way of doing things and nobody can tell you what to do. And you know, that 
in, in all fairness, you've got it on one side in the vegans, you've got it on the other side in the carnivores. You know, there's carnivores out there that won't eat anything but meat. You know, and they say, well, um, you can't eat vegetables because vegetables have got these uh, toxins in them that are meant to stop you from eating. Uh, and that's a dogmatic viewpoint. I don't care what your science is, you know. We've, you know, I, I think the Mediterranean diet is probably, you know, whenever you look at what's the best diet in the world, and overall that comes out on top because it's a mix of, um, of meat and dairy and fruit and vegetables and nuts and seeds and legumes is a mixture and you're getting, um, you're getting everything that you need. And I just do not believe that if you hit the extremes of these diets that you're gonna get those things that you need and I think you're gonna suffer in the long term. Like I said, this is only my opinion. Um, this is only, you know, something that I've come about with uh, in my life and in my journey after I stopped drinking alcohol. But, you know, at the end of the day, all I want is I want to be able to feed myself, and feed my, my, my uh, family the nutrients that are going to keep them going, that I can prevent them from having heart disease or cancer or any of these fucking things, right? And I'm not getting that information. There is so much bullshit out there, right? I was listening to two cardiologists, two what they said were top cardiologists. One was arguing for um, an omnivore diet. The other one was arguing for a plant-based diet. And the omnivore made more sense. And the reason why he made more sense was because the, the plant-based diet, he was talking about this um, epistemological study. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, from, I can't remember the guy's name now, I'll, I'll, I'll try and leave a link down below. But it was a, a wide-ranging study that was, they basically, he was talking about it from the perspective of these people, um, they changed the diet, and once they changed to a plant-based diet, to a, a, a plant-based whole foods diet, that these people's risk of, of heart disease went down, their risk of all these other things went down. But the problem was, it was, a, I think it was the Ornish, Dean Ornish study, um, but the problem was they not only changed that one factor, they also, people started exercising more, they stopped smoking, they stopped drinking, and they changed all these things so you couldn't, even though you could make that correlation between people, um, be, between people stopping, uh, between people starting a plant-based diet, whole foods diet, they got rid of all the crap in the diet, you know, they got rid of all the junk food in the diet, and you'll see it across the board. Whenever you're looking at a diet, they'll say, oh, the first thing that we're going to do is get rid of all this crap out of your, uh, out of your shell, uh, from your shelves and your fridge and all that kind of stuff, and you're not going to eat that anymore. And hey, presto, right? People make these big changes in their life and they drop weight. Well, they're going to drop weight. But then they say, well, it's because of our diet, not because of their diet. Now, the omnivore, as soon as he was talking about this Dean Orange study, he said to him, he said, look, you know, one of the... Uh, the things about that Ornish study was you can't come to that conclusion because they changed so many different variables. So there wasn't one variable that they changed and then they saw how that panned out. They changed so many different variables. And as soon as that happened, the plant-based doctor then started talking about morals and the morals of not killing animals. And, the, and he lost the argument straight away from me then because I didn't want to know that. Right? I don't want to know your morals. I want to know what is good for me and my family to eat. That's all I want to know. Then I can make my own moral judgments after that. I don't need anybody else to make my fucking moral judgments. So, you know, that angered me, you know, because if they cannot, if they cannot come together and tell you whether or not something like saturated fat is good for you or not, right? These are cardiologists, right? If nutritionists can't come together and they can't tell you definitively whether saturated fat is good for you whether cholesterol in your system is you know whether you whether you're going to get cholesterol from your your the food that you're eating which has been debunked a long time ago or whether you're getting whether the cholesterol that you're taking in from your uh, um uh from your the fats that you're eating that kind of thing whether that's going to affect you if they can't get that basic stuff right then how can they be believed and that's all we want everybody is to have that information so um unfortunately we can't trust the governments right no matter who it is i don't care whether you're on the left or the right or the middle th there is no government these days that is trustable 
they're all in it for the money. They're all individuals who are in it for the money. You I mean you get somebody who who goes into politics and they're on what 100,000 a year, 150,000 a year, and yet when they leave politics they're multi-millionaires. How the fuck does that happen, you know? So, you know, th this is this is something that I've read a lot into over the years and it just uh it kills me because all I want is is information, information that I can act on. The simplest of information that they should have at this stage, they should have that nailed down, whether or not protein is good for you, how much protein, what kind of protein, what kind of fats are good for you, how much carbohydrates are good for you, and they cannot. So as long as they have these, um, you know, and I'm sure there's a lot of doctors out there that will say, well, you know, this is not what we preach. We try to preach this, but like I said, if you're going on government guidelines, I don't trust you either because, um, you know, it's either laziness on your part or, um, yeah, you're, you've got too much faith in what the government is saying. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for today. I just want to, um, I'm, I'm testing out things on myself all the time and trying to really see what's the best thing for me to eat, like I say, myself and my family. I know this was a bit of a long one today. If you like these ones, give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the, the comments whether you like these walking videos and these long versions, just ranty videos, because I don't mind doing these. Um, I have a lot to rant about. <laughs> uh, take care of yourself. If you want help as normal to stop drinking alcohol, then um, we've got our preparation course, which you'll find down below in the comments, in the, the description box. It's a quick preparation. It's take you less than an hour, but it will really set you up for um, getting the best start to stop drinking. And um, we've got Habits V2, where we've got a whole program. We've got one-on-ones uh, with me. Um, we've got group sessions. We've got uh, lots and lots of videos, up to a year and beyond. Uh, we've got a, lots of different courses as well. And we've got a community, which I think is one of the finest communities around we've just got a lot of people who are heading in the right direction who want the same answers for themselves right who want to stop doing things that are shit for them and start doing things that are going to um, not guarantee them a a, uh, a long life but are at least putting them on the right track of getting a quality life with many more quantity of years but quality of years is what we're looking for so listen take care of yourself and i'll speak to you again soon onwards and upwards bye now